Excerpt from Preparation for a Christian Life by Soren Kierkegaard, 1850, translated by Lee M. Hollander in 1923. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Come hither, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What enormous multiplicity, what an almost boundless diversity of people invited! for a man a lowly man may indeed try to enumerate only a few of these diversities but he who invites must invite all men even if every one specially and individually the invitation goes forth then along the highways and the byways and along the loneliest paths ay goes forth where there is a path so lonely that one man only and no one else knows of it and goes forth where there is but one track the track of the wretched one who fled along that path with his misery that and no other track goes forth even where there is no path to show how one may return even there the invitation penetrates and by itself easily and surely finds its way back most easily indeed when it brings the fugitive along to him that issued the invitation come hither come hither all ye also thou and thou and thou too thou loneliest of all fugitives thus the invitation goes forth and remains standing wheresoever there is a parting of the ways in order to call out ah just as a trumpet call of the soldiers is directed to the four quarters of the globe likewise does this invitation sound wherever there is a meeting of roads with no uncertain sound for who would then come but with the certitude of eternity it stands by the parting of the ways where worldly and earthly sufferings have set down their crosses and calls out come hither all ye poor and wretched ones ye who in poverty must slave in order to assure yourselves not of a care-free but of a toilsome future ah bitter contradiction to have to slave for assuring oneself of that under which one groans of that which one flees ye despised and overlooked ones about whose existence no one ay no one is concerned not so much even as about some domestic animal which is of greater value ye sick and halt and blind and deaf and crippled come hither ye bedridden ay come hither ye too for the invitation makes bold to invite even the bedridden to come ye lepers for the invitation breaks down all differences in order to unite all it wishes to make good the hardship caused by the difference in men the difference which seats one as a ruler over millions in possessions of all gifts of fortune and drives another one out into the wilderness and why ah the cruelty of it because ah the cruel human inference because he is wretched indescribably wretched why then because he stands in need of help or at any rate of compassion and why then because human compassion is a wretched thing which is cruel when there is the greatest need of being compassionate and compassionate only when at bottom it is not true compassion ye sick of heart ye who only through your anguish learn to know that a man's heart and an animal's heart are two different things and what it means to be sick at heart what it means when the physician may be right in declaring one sound of heart and yet heart sick ye whom faithlessness deceived and whom human sympathy for the sympathy of man is rarely late in coming whom human sympathy made a target for mockery all ye wronged and aggrieved and ill-used all ye noble ones who as any and everybody will be able to tell you deservedly reap the reward of ingratitude for why were ye simple enough to be noble why foolish enough to be kindly and disinterested and faithful 
all ye victims of cunning of deceit of backbiting of envy whom baseness chose as its victim and cowardice left in the lurch whether now ye be sacrificed in remote and lonely places after having crept away in order to die or whether ye be trampled under foot in the thronging crowds where no one asks what rights ye have and no one what wrongs ye suffer and no one where ye smart or how ye smart whilst the crowd with brute force tramples you into the dust come ye hither the invitation stands at the parting of the ways where death parts death and life come hither all ye that sorrow and ye that vainly labor for indeed there is rest in the grave but to sit by a grave or to stand by a grave or to visit a grave all that is far from lying in the grave and to read to oneself again and again one's own words which one knows by heart the epitaph which one devised oneself and understands best namely who it is that lies buried here all that is not the same as to lie buried oneself in the grave there is rest but by the grave there is no rest for it is said so far and no farther and so you may as well go home again but however often whether in your thoughts or in fact you return to that grave you will never get any farther you will not get away from the spot and this is very trying and is by no means rest come ye hither therefore here is the way by which one may go farther here is rest by the grave rest from the sorrow over loss or rest in the sorrow of loss through him who everlastingly reunites those that are parted and more firmly than nature unites parents with their children and children with their parents for alas they were parted and more closely than the minister unites husband and wife for alas their separation did come to pass and more indissolubly than the bond of friendship unites friend with friend for alas it was broken separation penetrated everywhere and brought with it sorrow and unrest but here is rest come hither also ye who had your abodes assigned to you among the graves ye who are considered dead to human society but neither missed nor mourned not buried and yet dead that is belonging neither to life nor to death ye alas to whom human society cruelly closed its doors and from whom no grave has as yet opened itself in pity come hither ye also here is rest and here is life the invitation stands at the parting of the ways where the road of sin turns away from the enclosure of innocence ah come hither ye are so close to him but a single step in the opposite direction and ye are infinitely far from him very possibly ye do not stand in need of rest nor grasp fully what that means but still follow the invitation so that he who invites may save you from a predicament out of which it is so difficult and dangerous to be saved and so that being saved you may stay with him who is the saviour of all likewise of innocence for even if it were possible that innocence be found somewhere and altogether pure why should not innocence also need a saviour to keep it safe from evil the invitation stands at the parting of the ways where the road of sin turns away to enter more deeply into sin come hither all ye who have strayed and have been lost whatever may have been your error and sin whether one more pardonable in the sight of man and nevertheless perhaps more frightful or one more terrible in the sight of man and yet perchance more pardonable whether it be one which became known here on earth or one which though hidden yet is known in heaven and even if ye found pardon here on earth without finding rest in your souls or found no pardon because ye did not seek it or because ye sought it in vain ah return and come hither here is rest 
the invitation stands at the parting of the ways where the road of sin turns away for the last time and to the eye is lost in perdition ah return return and come hither do not shrink from the difficulties of the retreat however great do not fear the irksome way of conversion however laboriously it may lead to salvation whereas sin with winged speed and growing pace leads forward or downward so easily so indescribably easy as easily in fact as when a horse altogether freed from having to pull cannot even with all his might stop the vehicle which pushes him into the abyss do not despair over each relapse which the god of patience has patience enough to pardon and which a sinner should surely have patience enough to humble himself under nay fear nothing and despair not he that saith come hither he is with you on the way from him come help and pardon on that way of conversion which leads to him and with him is rest come hither all all ye with him is rest and he will raise no difficulties he does but one thing he opens his arms he will not first ask you you sufferer as righteous men alas are accustomed to even when willing to help are you not perhaps yourself the cause of your misfortune have you nothing with which to reproach yourself it is so easy to fall into this human error and from appearances to judge a man's success or failure for instance if a man is a cripple or deformed or has an unprepossessing appearance to infer that therefore he is a bad man or when a man is unfortunate enough to suffer reverses so as to be ruined or as to go down in the world to infer that therefore he is a vicious man ah and this is such an exquisitely cruel pleasure this being conscious of one's own righteousness as against the sufferer explaining his afflictions as god's punishment so that one does not even dare to help him or asking him that question which condemns him and flatters your own righteousness before helping him but he will not ask you thus will not in such cruel fashion be your benefactor and if you are yourself conscious of your sin he will not ask about it will not break still further the bent reed but raise you up if you will but join him he will not point out by way of contrast and place you outside of himself so that your sin will stand out as still more terrible but he will grant you a hiding place within him and hidden within him your sins will be hidden for he is the friend of sinners let him but behold a sinner and he not only stands still opening his arms and says come hither nay but he stands and waits as did the father of the prodigal son or he does not merely remain standing and waiting but goes out to search as a shepherd went forth to search for the strayed sheep or as the woman went to search for the lost piece of silver he goes nay he has gone but an infinitely longer way than any shepherd or any woman for did he not go the infinitely long way from being god to becoming man which he did to seek sinners end of preparation for a christian life by soren kierkegaard eighteen fifty translated by lee m hollander in 1923.